Hello and welcome to the show. We are back with a, another Hot Wheels showdown here on Forza Horizon 3. And today I'm going to be using a Supra. You guys wanted to see me use a Supra, so I've decided to use my favourite of the, uh, the Supras, this being the Mark III. I am thinking this car stands a good chance of doing well. It is in the, well, uh, current golden era for vehicles. Late 80s, early 90s cars have tended to go very, very quick around here. There are a couple of exceptions, but uh, yeah, on the whole, uh, certainly the uh, the top kind of three, four area uh, is yeah, kind of full of these sort of uh, vehicles. They have tended to be a, a good, a good choice. So. The Supra is going to uh, get a shot at going fastest. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is there's an option for a wide body kit on it. We shall do that. Uh, it makes the car, it raises the car up massively. I don't quite know why. We'll put it on race suspension and, and sort that out. But with the uh, body kit on the vehicle, we can get some bigger tyres, and that is always helpful. Uh, we will get a uh, interesting number of wings. Look at that. That is an entire dining table on the back of your car. I'm impressed. Uh, <laughs> That is equally impressive for a wig as well. Uh, however, we go for the Forza wing because downforce. Downforce is what we need. So that is what we are going to be doing. Tyres. We will, of course, have the vehicle on the Hot Wheels compound tyres. Let's jump the PI up all the way to A class. Not ideal. Two 7.5s at the front. There's some lovely big tyres on this car and three one fives at the rear. That is the sort of thing that we want to see on our vehicle. That's good news. Uh, considering the Bentley had uh, smaller tyres than this, Bentley Bentley was all-wheel drive, but uh, still, that, that's some good a good size of tyre on our Supra. Let's go and grab some other upgrades. Brakes, of course, that race suspension, I'm hoping will make the car... It's not massively low, I'll be honest. Um... Yeah, I guess that's just what we have to all we have to live with. No one knows that about this car before. But uh, there we go. We'll put in the roll cage and we will try and get out. Yeah, I think we're going to go full weight reduction on this. I don't really want, I don't really want the car being over three thousand pounds. And by the time we've probably done an engine swap and turbos and so on, and it does come with turbos to begin with. Uh, but when we swap the engine, I don't know what engine we're going to go for just yet. We'll have a look at what the standard engine is capable of. I am not sure it's capable of top of S one class. I don't think we've got the uh, don't think we've got the tunability in the engine, if you like, to be doing that. I mean, it is going up, but I think we, that, that's we've put on the two biggest engine parts, and we are now currently only sitting at around mid S1 class. So yeah, we'll go we'll go with an engine swap. I don't actually know what engine we're going to get. I assume a V8 of some description potentially, three liter twin turbo i6 or the 3.2. Okay, we don't get a. Uh, a V8 option on this car. I'm surprised most cars have a V8 option. Do we want to go for the twin turbo i6 or do we want to go for the considerably lighter but also we'll probably need turbos 3.2 litre. I don't think I've ever used the 3 litre inline 6 in a build before. I know I've used the 3.2 but we haven't used this one before so we'll go for that. Uh, we can okay we can swap the so the single turbo is a better option than the twin turbo in terms of power. Uh, sure, you know what? If it's if the game records are going to get more power out of that, then I'm going to go for a single turbo option. Uh, we'll see how much. Oh yeah, we can get plenty of plenty of power out of uh, out of this engine. Okay, that's cool. We will then continue to throw on. Uh, maybe not go for camshafts just yet. We'll throw on other bits and pieces as well while we are here. Ooh, we could probably do with a gearbox just to make sure while I've got still plenty of PI to play around with because we will, yeah, that's why. Uh, <laughs> we do need to, uh, to have, yeah, because okay, it was geared limited earlier. We do need to have the ability to tune the gear ratios to make sure that uh, that we aren't going to well run out of speed when we come around the loop. Uh, do we do? I think we did all the handling stuff. I guess we've just got a couple of bits of engine parts to throw on now, and we will. We're going to get 700 horsepower out of this. It's not the lightest car that we have seen, but still, 723 horsepower. It's got more power than the Bentley we saw out last time, and 1,200 pounds lighter. That's a significant amount of well power to weight ratio going on right there. And let's go flywheel it up. Uh, flywheel and then drive shaft. I should imagine we'll do the trick. 
flywheel, drive shaft. Oh, we can go all the way with the drive shafts. Oh, maybe we'll go second stage and then clutch as well. Just uh, be sneaky. There we go. We'll try. We'll try the next stage of drive. Nope. But <laughs> worth a look. You never know. Right. Stats wise, this car is looking good. Power, torque, plentiful, weight, not too bad. I mean, you'd like it a little bit lighter, but 2,800 pounds isn't too bad. Giant, giant tyres. I think we have a serious contender here. I think we have a very, very serious contender. We are back once more at the skyscraper takeoff circuit with our Supra going to be, well, trying to be to 133.6, time set by the Sierra Cosworth. I have just five laps with the car to, yeah, try and beat that time. Statistically speaking, I do think this Supra stands a good chance of certainly fighting towards the top, unless it is crazy, uncontrollably Larry, which I can't imagine it'll be any more so than the likes of the Sierra. It's probably not quite going to have the same quarter speed as the Testarossa. However, I don't think it's going to be crazy out of control. Are we going to be flat through turn? No, not quite, not quite. Although I think that is also a fair bit to do with the amount of speed that we are carrying into, uh, into turn three. Yeah, we might not quite have the ultimate. Okay, we've not quite got the same quarter grip as I was hoping. We are on cold tyres, of course, at the moment. Uh, only a minor thing, but uh, the uh, Hot Wheels track on Horizon 3 is a, mi a more minor thing than the likes of uh, Motorsport 6 and so on. But it is something that uh, is a little bit noticeable with some of the cars when you're kind of chucking them around on the opening lap. What is the acceleration like in this car? 168 miles an hour. It is 12 miles an hour quicker than the, uh, the Bentley down there, for example. Actually, a little bit slower than uh, you might possibly have expected down there. It's not bad though. It's it certainly puts it in the right uh, right ballpark if and it is a big if if we can carry enough quarter speed with this uh, vehicle and if we can get a nice landing on the jumps. I'm now concerned about all of these cars when it comes to uh, comes with this boost pack because I don't quite trust them all now. It's, it's again a bit of a bounce from the uh, from the Supra as we head up around the loop. Should be able to, yeah, it can throw itself around there much quicker. We don't dip below 190 miles an hour. It's a good run down the other side. 221 for the Toyota. Slide its way out of the final corner. 37.4 from our vehicle as we fight our way through turn one and turn two. Having gone from driving the Bentley to driving this is a... Uh, a little bit of a little bit of a change, I'll be honest. Uh, just, just a smidge. We get back on the uh, course, just about. Uh, we will carry speed up at the top of the hill this time a little bit better. Yeah, got the lines sorted out this time around. We'll be flat out. Yeah, we've got the composure to be flat out there, no problem. Uh, we're going to run a little bit wide. Not too terrible though. It's yeah, we can get away with it. It's not a perfect lap, this, by any means. It's still kind of learning the car at the moment, figuring out what I what I can and what I can't get away with. Brakes seem pretty solid, though. Always a uh, comforting thing to uh, to have when you dive on the brakes. The, you know, the belief that it's going to get stopped, even when you're being a little bit uh, braver each lap around. I'm not sure we've got Sierra beating pace in this car. I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure we've got... I'm not sure we've got the overall quarter speed. Now, I could be wrong. Of course, I've been wrong about cars in the past. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it is blindingly fast through the corners. And again, we're having this slightly wonky bounce on the landing that has uh, caught out, well, the Bentley the worst. has caught out a few cars uh, trying to run down that inside again. 221 miles an hour for our Supra. Get it. And risk running out towards the wall. Okay, a 134. Point six, a good lap time, a very good lap time from the car. We're going to need more though. We're going to need, well, we need a second if we want to go fastest. We're going to ideally be wanting to get more speed. And I think there is some more time in the car. We won't make mistakes through turn three. Don't go the wrong side of the lamppost. Yeah, I reckon through the first three corners, the Bentley is as quick as this. I reckon it is just as fast through those first three corners as this Supra, but the Toyota will pull away massively as we come to these acceleration zones. Uh, I mean, around these corners, again, the Supra very, very similar in terms of pace to, <laughs> to the Bentley. That giant, heavy, heavyweight car was so, so impressive 
around these turns, but the Supra's doing 167 into this corner, whereas a Bentley was doing, what, 155? That's a big difference on a small, a small acceleration zone, and again, it's 220 down at the bottom of the loop. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm liking this car. It's a solid, it's a solid car. I'm not sure it's quite blowing me away in any particular aspect, any particular part of the, of the circuit. We will have to, of course, wait and see if I can get a good run here. If I could just get a good, I can't, I can't even get the nose down now <laughs> to launch it across there. Don't want to run up the inside as we head up. We do want to dive down to the inside for the uh, descent there a little bit. Not the best run around the, uh, loop. Oh, might have left that one there too late. Very, very late from the uh, Supra. Well, I managed to clonk the wall and came to a dead halt. So, this lap's gone. Might as well not screw up the next lap by uh, taking a little bit of a run-up. As soon as I stopped against the wall, it uh, seems okay to me to uh, do that. A little bit sneaky, but uh, there we go. Right, now we can have a good run on to our next lap. So, that lap very much very much, I say I say a waste, not quiet. We learned, we learned what we can and what we can't do to an extent. Uh, pushed my luck a little bit too much with the uh, with the braking. Oh, we're not going to get turned in there, are we? And then when we do, we get a little bit of oversteer from the car. Not a brilliant turn three. Let's hope we can make up time elsewhere through this, uh, through this. I might keep it in fourth, actually, just to quell any wheel spin that we might get at the top of the uh, course there. We'll drop it down to third. It's struggling a bit with understeer through that section. It's very weird to say, but uh, yeah, the Bentley by a long way turned in better than the uh, than the Supra does here. Big stop into the crossover section. We go now. Patience. I say patience. Actually, there is enough traction to get away with. Just jump on the accelerator out of there. Ever so slight bit of a wiggle, um, but nothing. Nothing will cost us any time, nothing to really worry about. Now again, we can get on that power, make the most of our acceleration. Well, this is our penultimate lap here. Are we going to get one more shot after this? Uh, are we going to get a good run? Still not a good run off of the boost pads. I don't think they're getting worse from the Supra. So I can't believe we've got two cars in a row that are having real issues with the... Uh, with the old flying there. Peculiar one, to say the least. 220. Oh, we had a little bit of a lock up there. We have got the car slowed down, though, for that final quarter. It's a very low 34 set on that lap. So a little bit quicker. As I said previous, dirty laps, when it's just from... Well, that one there's not even a dirty lap. It was from previous lap. I will go frame by frame and, and get a lap time if it goes quicker. Because, well, we're scraping the wall. I'm not gaining any... I mean, you, I think you can wall bounce around here to gain time. I'm not doing that. Uh, so, uh, with it dirty in the lap from sometimes the tidiest of brushes against the wall, I am allowing those times to uh, to stand. We're going to need something mega here from the Supra if we are going to get into the 33s, I think. It's just not yeah, it's not quite good enough in any one area. It's a good car, you know, do not get me wrong. We're, we're talking about a car that's uh, low 34 lap times around here. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a solid car. There is good acceleration. There is good... Uh, speed through the turns, but unlike the uh, Testarossa that was very good through the corners, the Sierra that was pretty damn good through the corners and very fast in a straight line, this just I don't think has the has the composure to keep with the Ferrari through the turns or the speed of the Sierra, sadly. And we've got big problems with the jump. Now, neither the Sierra or the Ferrari actually had uh, mega launches off this secondary boost pad. Uh, but this car here has got, well, bigger problems with the bouncing. That's, the, I think, probably the best run we've had so far in the, uh, in the Supra. 191 miles an hour held around the loop as we hit the braking zone for the final time. Slow the car down for the last couple of corners. Run towards the line. It's a 34-0. But, uh, yeah. No more. No more with the Supra. It's a, it's a good time. A, uh, <laughs> a low 34, high 33 is a very good time. Let's not forget. Overall, though, it just doesn't excel in any one sector or overall quite well enough to really threaten the Sierra. Yeah, certainly not a bad car to drive by any means, but just not quite fastest, fast enough, I should say, sorry, overall. A 34-0, though, will put the car into a sixth 
place. It beats the Pursuit Ute, the Renault 5 Turbo, the Charger Daytona, Cadillac CTSV, and so on. Loses out marginally, and we are already talking fractions here to the Mercedes 190E. It's kind of a couple of tenths down on the MX-5, three tenths down on the M3, four tenths down on our leaders. So, yeah, you know, a very, very quick car, but can't beat them in in any particular particular area i thought it'd be a good car you know statistically speaking looked like a good car we're actually struggling with a uh, a bit more a bit more under just a general lack of grip really from this uh, from this car than i was expecting that's sometimes just the way it goes with uh, with these vehicles that though is uh, going to be it for this video thank you very much for watching and until next time uh, goodbye.